Kylie and Lindsay, the Maine Coalition Against Sexual Assault says it is difficult to determine how widespread sex trafficking is in Maine, but the agency's Sex Trafficking and Exploitation Network does have some statistics. Between 2007 and December of 2018, the National Human Trafficking Resource Center hotline has received more than 440 calls from Maine and identified at least 55 cases where trafficking likely happened. In Maine, the center estimates that there are roughly 200 to 300 sex trafficking cases each year. Nearly 40% of law enforcement officers have seen a trafficking case in the last year. 71% of law enforcement officers were not familiar with any organizations in Maine addressing human trafficking. We spoke to one of Maine's trafficking coordinators with the Coalition Against Sexual Assault, who explained the difference between sex trafficking and sexual exploitation. Trafficking is a legal definition. It involves force, fraud, or coercion by another person who is benefiting from the person being sold for sex. She estimates that the cases in Maine and likely nationwide are underreported. Uh, so we know that lots of people are engaged in commercial sex that doesn't happen by force, fraud, or coercion, that doesn't meet this definition of trafficking, but that is exploitive and harmful to the people who are engaging in it. Um, and we know that exploitation is, um, although not as talked about because it's not this definition, really common. Um, so sex exploitation could be someone who is because of their circumstances, because of their economic situation, they don't have a choice but to exchange um, uh, sex for basic needs like shelter, food, substances that they might be dependent upon, resources to take care of their children. Is the John aware that the person they're engaging with is either being exploited, trafficked, or neither? Uh, people who are buying commercial sex, often referred to as Johns, um, might know that the person who they're buying sex from has been trafficked or exploited, or they might not. And so a lot of the education that we do around trafficking and exploitation is about talking about when you engage or encounter someone who is exchanging sex, you don't know their full story. You don't know um, their history, you don't know their life. And so we can't make assumptions about why that person is where they are or what they're doing. And we should just treat everyone with respect and let them share their own stories with us. When you were working with survivors in your previous position, what was that like for you to hear their stories of what they've been through? I think hearing about anyone's victimization is really hard. Um, it's really impossible to know what it was really like to live someone else's life. Um, and supporting them is a great opportunity to help someone build their life and heal. Um, and folks who get to work in those fields are, are lucky to get to be a part of that journey. That is Jess Bedard with the Maine Coalition Against Sexual Assault. Maine passed a law in 2010 that all law enforcement officers must be trained to identify sex trafficking. That's training that was updated in 2016. Lee and Lindsay. All right, Chris Costa, thank you very much, sir. In Maine, the most recent case of sex trafficking involves a couple accused of luring Chinese women to Maine. Sao Chow Li and Durong Mayo were accused of renting homes and hotel rooms in Maine, Vermont, and New Hampshire to prostitute women, including two homes in Portland and several hotel rooms at locations in Portland, South Portland, and Scarborough. The couple face up to life in prison if convicted. This case is still under investigation by several local, state, and federal agencies. And for the latest on the case involving New England Patriot owner Robert Kraft, stay tuned to News Center Maine at 5:30, 6 o'clock. We'll also have the latest information on our website as well as our our mobile app.